So uh, I too would like to acknowledge and celebrate the traditional owners on whose lands and airways we meet today. I'm here on campus uh, on the Ngunnawal Nambri people's uh, traditional lands. And it is great to be able to be meeting here tonight on land that goes back literally 20 millennia. Uh, and pay my respects to elders past and present. Tonight is a special occasion. It is a year that has probably been uh, the toughest for most, most of us have ever experienced in our lives. I like to say it is a year uh, that is incredibly memorable, but one I would like to forget. Uh, it is now more important than ever that in a year like this, that we do stop and celebrate the successes of our community. ANU continues to be at the heart of research uh, and we continue to provide the educational excellence that the nation looks forward to. Uh, one of our core values is that we strive for excellence in everything we do. And if we're going to strive for excellence, we should celebrate it. Every year, it's true to say that ANU could be nowhere without its people that we acknowledge tonight. But this year, that sentiment is truer than ever. The dedication and hard work seen within our community this year is unlike anything I have ever seen together, uh, I've ever seen before. We have been surrounded by staff who are committed to doing the work required to help all of us overcome the challenges we faced in whatever form it was needed. We saw new teams form, new innovations thought up, and different technology used than you know, ever dreamed possible before. And tonight we are going to acknowledge uh, some of those people. Ultimately, ANU is a university, it is, because of its people. And these highly dedicated people can be found in all corners of the university, working on entirely different missions, all to help us achieve our collective goal, which is to serve our nation as the national university. And while tonight we celebrate individual achievements, it's also important that we acknowledge those who help get them here. When a people achieve great things, they always do so with great people around them. I would like to acknowledge and thank the colleagues of tonight's recipients. I'd also like to thank the sponsors who took the time to nominate their colleagues. These individual accolades do not happen without the help and support of the team around each of us. And of course, our recipients, families, and friends are part of that team. Dedicating such a large part of yourself to your work cannot help it happen without support of loved ones. And so I'd also like to thank the entire community because this year has been incredibly difficult and the patience and resilience everyone has shown as we work together to meet the most significant challenge in our university's history cannot be uh, over-described. Your response is a testament to what makes ANU, our community, such a wonderful part uh, of our, each of our lives. So I'm very pleased that we are joined by our Chancellor, Julie Bishop, this evening, who will be presenting the 2020 Chancellor's Award. So without further ado, I'd like to invite the Chancellor to speak and present our first awards for the evening. Julie? Thank you for the introduction, Brian. And I'm joining you this evening from Perth on the traditional lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. So wherever we are across our nation this evening, we celebrate the first Australians on whose land we each meet to join this event. I'm delighted to be able to join you tonight at the 2020 Vice-Chancellor's Annual Awards and to present the Chancellor's Awards this evening at the end of my first year as a new Chancellor. And while the gala dinner couldn't go ahead given the pandemic-induced circumstances, I'm very pleased that we're still able to come together to recognise and celebrate the exceptional contributions made by our academic and professional staff, which is especially important, I think, in what's been an incredibly challenging year. If a university is deemed to be great, it is because of their people, their researchers, academics, lecturers, staff, students, the alumni. And tonight, we recognise those academic and professional staff whose dedication and hard work for the university have helped us maintain ANU's sterling reputation as Australia's national university, 
as an institution of national significance and one of the world's best. And this is due in major part to the contributions of our people in areas of research, teaching, innovation and policy. This year in particular, we've seen our ANU community respond not only to the challenges faced here on campus, but also make a contribution to our nation's response to the pandemic. From our medical and health experts to our economic and public policy advisors, I've been reminded throughout this period of the high caliber people that we have at our university. And so I'm honored tonight to present the 2020 Chancellor's Awards. First, the Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Contribution to the University. Now, this award recognises contributions to the economic, cultural, scientific and social development of Australia and the international community, which demonstrates eminent achievement and merit of the highest degree. Tonight, I'm very pleased to announce that the 2020 Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Contribution to the University goes to Professor Michael Kaju Hall. Professor Kaju Hall's exemplary career has, yes, please all. His exemplary career has spanned industry and academia, and he's recognised as a leader in university industry collaboration. Mick is deeply passionate about building entrepreneurial capability in graduates and in the wider community. His understanding of the local, national and international innovation ecosystems enables him to be an innovator of new approaches to create economic and social impact from university research. My sincere congratulations. I invite Professor Mick Kaju Hall to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Chancellor. Uh, look, it is a great, great honour. Um, I've always felt that the university has actually contributed more to me than I've contributed to it, but um, it's been a career that I've had here which has been, you know, really um, enjoyable. And I, if I've made a contribution, I, you know, I thank the, 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 uh, the recognition of that. But it goes uh, really also to the colleagues I've had. My colleagues in engineering when I first got here, uh, who supported what we were doing down there, but more latterly in the last 10 years, my team at the Innovation ANU and the team in ANU Enterprise. Um, without them, we, I, I couldn't have done what I've done. And I think, it, the, as Brian has already said, it's the team around us that allow us to, to make the contribution to the institution. So thank you very much. It is a real honor to be uh, recognized in this way. Thank you, Mick, and best wishes for your future endeavors. Congratulations once again, and cheers to you. Yes. I hope that's a, a nice champagne you're quaffing there. Secondly, the Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Service to the Campus Community. This award recognizes voluntary and sustained contributions which enhance the general welfare and life of the campus and benefit the institution as a whole. Tonight, I'm very pleased to announce that the recipient of the 2020 Chancellor's Award for Outstanding Service to the Campus Community is Associate Professor Anna Cowan. Professor, Professor Cowan is an inspiring leader, an advocate for education and for the student experience, both within the College of Science and the College of Health and Medicine and across the university more broadly. Anna works tirelessly in her roles whilst carrying a large workload and she is a valued source of knowledge, wisdom and excellent judgment. She's passionate about the national role of our university. And through her work with the National Youth Science Foundation and Science Olympiad, Anna has introduced many students to tertiary STEM studies and careers and in turn brought extraordinarily talented students to ANU. I ask Professor Cowan to say a few words. Thank you, Chancellor, and thank you, Vice-Chancellor. This is, this is a, a real honour, and it's very unexpected, I have to say. But what I would say is nothing that I do at the university is done by myself. It's done with teams, and teams across different areas of the university, both in the College of Science and the College of Health and Medicine, but right across the university. And I'd like to acknowledge the university community, because that's what makes my role and everyone else's role worthwhile. So thank you. Thank you for your valuable contribution to ANU and to the STEM community, Professor Cowan, all the very best to you. Now it's my great honor to present the 2020 Peter Bone Award, which represents our top accolade 
and acknowledges highly exceptional contribution to ANU. The Peter Bohm Award is named in honour of former ANU Chancellor, Professor the Honourable Peter Bohm, AC. This award is the university's most prestigious, recognising eminent achievement and merit of the highest order. In fact, this year we had such outstanding nominations that the judging panel determined that there were two highly deserving recipients. So I'm pleased to announce that this year we have two winners for the 2020 Peter Bohm Award. First is Emeritus Professor Rodney Baxter. Over his long and distinguished career, Professor Baxter has made groundbreaking contributions to the study of exactly solved models in statistical mechanics, which have involved the invention of ingenious mathematical techniques. His brilliant solutions have led to a deeper understanding of the theory of phase transitions and critical phenomena and remarkable relations with quantum field theory. His work has also initiated and continues to inspire profound developments across a broad spectrum, broad spectrum of mathematics, including quantum groups, knot theory, and representation theory of infinite dimensional algebras. He brings international renown to the Australian National University. Professor Baxter, I invite you to say a few words. Thank you, thank you very much, Julie. It is indeed a, a great honor. Um, I've been at the ANU a long while. I first came in 1961. I've seen it grow. I was a research student. We, the vice chancellor, everybody went to be the vice chancellor. I don't think that's unfortunately quite so true now. But um, it's been a great place to work. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Baxter, for your short but very heartfelt words. We deeply appreciate your contribution to our university. Our second distinguished recipient of the 2020 Peter Bohm Award is Professor Margaret Jolly. This recognises Professor Jolly's outstanding career at ANU, where she's achieved significant national and international recognition in the fields of anthropology, Pacific and gender studies. She's transformed our understanding of gender relations in our region, combining the perspectives and methods of anthropology and history in a transdisciplinary approach, characteristic of both Pacific and gender studies. Over her remarkable career, Margaret has successfully supervised 55 PhD students, 10 postdoctoral fellows, several supported by ARC grants, and mentored many more early career scholars and produced many hundreds of scholarly publications. Professor Jolly has played a pivotal role in the foundation of the Cross Campus Gender Institute at ANU, launched in 2011, which has had a tremendous impact on the ANU community and beyond. Margaret was appointed a member of the Order of Australia in January this year for services to education on gender and Pacific studies. Congratulations, Professor Jolly. I invite you to say a few words. Thank you so much, Chancellor, and thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. Um, I'm going to be a bit longer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope I won't get cut off. I just wanted to start by saying I'm both thrilled and humbled. This is a very welcome culmination for me in what has been the most challenging year for us all. I wanted to start with very heartfelt thanks to all those people of the Pacific, my interlocutors, my teachers, my students who I've worked with over several decades. I would have to say that their Indigenous knowledge and their embodied practice has been at the heart of what I've done. And even though there may be many writings that bear my name, they are effectively co-creations between their knowledge and mine. I've actually been very fortunate in my career to have roamed the academic globe, Cambridge, Santa Cruz, University of Hawaii at Manoa, a post rouge with CNRS in France, but for over 25 years now, ANU has been my intellectual home. And I benefited so greatly from the brilliance, the generosity and the warmth of my colleagues, most recently from my director, Simon Haberley, stunning archeologist and citizen, science on, citizen scientist on Poland, who nominated me, thank you very much, and, all the fine professional and academic staff and students 
of our stellar school, the School of Culture, History and Language. Sharon Bill, presently Interim Dean of the College of Asia and the Pacific, an old friend from Sydney days, but though Interim Dean, a woman of great insight, acumen and grace. I want to thank the many colleagues across the several schools of CAP, CAS and the College of Law. I relish the intellectual vibrancy of the ANU's innovative cross-campus institutes, the Gender Institute, the Pacific Institute, the Climate Change Institute, and I applaud the innovative vision of those currently in Chancery, Brian and his team, and celebrate how the ANU has, in this period of cascading crises, dealt with these problems with compassion and with wisdom. Finally, I want to say that I'm honoured by an award bearing the name of our erstwhile Chancellor, Peter Bohm, who we might recall, along with the late Senator Susan Ryan, initiated the Sex Discrimination Act of 1984. But I must observe <laughs> that in the last 15 years, there has only been one other woman recipient of the Peter Bohm Award, Professor Susan von Kammerer, uh, a biologist working on photosynthesis. So we now have you, Julie Bishop, as our Honourable Chancellor, and I trust that there will be many more women nominated and awarded for this great honour in the decades to come. So sorry to be a bit long, Michael, thank you. Thank you, Professor Jolly, um, for your words. And we wish you all the very best in your future endeavours. And as the first female chancellor of ANU, I'm delighted to present a chancellor's award to the second female recipient. Each of our chancellor award recipients tonight will be gifted a beautifully framed prized photograph from our ANU archives to honour their contribution to the university. And the awards team will be in touch with further details. So congratulations again to this remarkable group of recipients, Rodney and Margaret, Anna and Mick. Back to you, Professor Martin. Thank you, Julie. Wow. Well, we started like 2020 off with a bang. This is fantastic. And I really uh, echo Julie's congratulations of, of all of our award winners so far, just massively inspirational colleagues. This calls, of course, for an Olympic moment. Uh, and here we have another Olympic moment. Uh, this time I'm going to correctly identify Julie. Uh, there's Julie Bishop here in this photograph. Uh, and I believe if I understand the Wikipedia entry correctly, she is here running with Olympic superstar Usain Bolt. Uh, a very, very, well, hang on, I'm getting a call. Hello? Not, not Usain Bolt, some British guy, Bojo. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry, that, that's not Usain Bolt, evidently, that's some British guy. Uh, Donald, no, uh, Boris something. Anyway, I can see Julie's well ahead of him anyway, so there you go. <laughs> so there's our Olympic moment. Uh, I hope that Wikipedia starts to really get better because I'm getting a lot of calls here tonight. Ah. Well, we're gonna start our next set of awards and we're not coming down a notch at all. Uh, we're moving now to the Vice-Chancellor announcing the Award for Reconciliation. And as we've, we've reflected on already a few times in tonight's event, uh, we, we have our campus on Aboriginal land, uh, as, as all of Australia is. And so reconciliation is a massive part of what the ANU stands for. So I'm going to hand over now to Brian, who's going to announce the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Reconciliation. Thank you, uh, Michael, and may I say I can see you're pushing the boundaries of academic freedom here tonight. Uh, and uh, I will do my best to protect you from the chancellor as uh, they have strong views on academic freedom. Uh, so tonight's award on uh, reconciliation is one that is of particular importance to me. And it's one of the ones that uh, I guess I see as being potentially having intergenerational impacts on what we do. This award recognizes initiatives and professional activities to achieve the vision and targets set out in the university's reconciliation action plan. But in many respects, as I said, it has, uh, you know, literally uh, ramifications for uh, generations ahead. This year's reconciliation award has two recipients. The first goes to an individual that has made lasting contribution to reconciliation that extends well beyond the immediate scope of her work. 
Azur Hermes has worked with indigenous donors, their communities, and represented organizations across Australia to enable important genomics research. Azur's intelligent, culturally attuned leadership and enabled medical research that benefits indigenous Australians to proceed, whilst also honoring the traditional cultural imperative to lay the samples to a spiritual rest. Hard to imagine a more powerful symbol of reconciliation. And indeed, the work is being used in things far beyond just the genomics where it started. So congratulations, Azur. I would like now to invite Azur to say a few words. Hi, thank you. I'm actually going to take a little bit of extra time as well, because there's a few people I want to thank. So. Um, I have to say that it's an absolute privilege to be able to travel to some of the most remote communities in Australia. And I get to work with the most incredible communities and families, and I get to immerse myself in culture and country on a daily basis. And more often than not, it always feels like I've already won the major prize because I get to do that. But this role isn't one that I can do on my own. And while I'm absolutely delighted to win this award, it's one that needs to be shared with a group of people. So firstly, Hardit Patel, our bioinformatician, uh, he spends countless hours poring over our data, building systems, writing grants, practice, uh, presenting our work at conferences, all without complaint and often sacrificing his own academic priorities to push NSIC forward. I want to thank Jackie Stenhouse, who's the absolute rock of NSIC. She's the backbone. There's no way that we would be where we are today without her. She's been my closest ally, my mentor, and mostly my friend. Simon E. Steele, NSIG is his baby. He created this organization from nothing and carried it forward. Simon hired me as a community engagement officer. And for the last five years, he has spent time giving me the space to not only develop my community engagement portfolio, but to develop as a person also. I get to be deputy director of NSIG because of the time he's invested in me. He's trusted his baby and he's given it to Graham Mann, the new director, and myself to move forward. And I hope that we can make him proud. I also really need to acknowledge my husband who's sitting off the frame here um, because while I get to go out in the field and have all these incredible experiences and have all of the fun, he sits at home often for weeks on end taking care of our home life. He does it all without complaint um, and I don't know a more supportive man in my life and I really appreciate him. And lastly, I really want to recognise our Aboriginal communities that work with NC, including my own Yarraba. I want to thank each and every one of them for inviting me into their communities and into their homes, for talking to me and for sharing their culture and knowledge. But mostly I want to thank them for trusting me with their precious DNA, their story. NSIG would not be possible without our communities and I promise that I'll always work hard for them. Thank you. Well, thank you, Azur. Uh, now, our second recipient is a team who has achieved a remarkable and, remarkable and sector leading initiative that will revolutionize the way the National University admits Indigenous Australians now and forever into the future. The comprehensiveness and generosity of the Cambry scholarships are meant to address some of the issues confronting Indigenous Australians contemplating joining ANU from anywhere around our nation. By providing accommodation support, living expenses, and funding for return travel home twice a year, integrated with a commitment to academic and pastoral support provided primarily through the outstanding Chabal Center, the design of the package is both innovative and empowering. So congratulations to the Canberra Scholarships team and join me in welcoming team leader, Auntie Anne Martin to speak. Auntie Anne. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, you Chancellor. Um, this started as a, as a tiny little, tiny little kernel that grew oh so suddenly. And um, if it were not for the decision of an amazing council, um, we would not be having this discussion tonight. So I really want to acknowledge the ANU Council and your leadership, Brian, in this space. And then came, how do we build it? So, um, in the initial stages, there was a, a small nucleus, and I really want to acknowledge um, 
um, our, our teams led by, by Barbara um, in advancement and people like Asmi Wood, Sam Provost, Felicity, uh, Katerina, Jenny Nutter, love working with Jen, Andrew Coulter, Sarah Bays and Carson Warburn. Um, you know, you took um, the craziness of what we we're seeking to do and uh, you've made it work. And we have now recently interviewed our second cohort of Canberra scholars. And it's like I said at that council meeting, people like you don't do things for people like us. You did it. And I think that the ancestors walk with us on this one and you have changed the future for generations of young Aboriginal students to come. And for, for that, for, from, from all of us, to all of you, to the most fabulous community in the world, the ANU, I, I extend my deepest heartfelt thanks. We are nothing without you. Thank you. Beautifully spoken. Beautiful words, Auntie Anne, and, and uh, I think I can reciprocate and say we are nothing without you as well. Uh, and uh, congratulations again to Azua and to Auntie Anne for the enduring contributions you make to bring our nation together and to make our nation whole. Well, time for some more inspiration. Brian, you're going to you're going to protect me from Julie. Julie, you'd best start protecting me from Brian. So. Here we have another Olympic moment. This I understand, and again, I'm referring uh, to Wikipedia, that, that font of all wisdom. Uh, this is uh, Brian Schmidt uh, being awarded the Olympic gold medal for hammer throw at the 2004 Athens Olympics. Uh, so uh, obviously the silver and gold, uh, silver and bronze medal went to uh, people who weren't Australian. And, uh, oh, I'm getting it. Not, not Athens, not, not, not hammer throw. What, what prize? Nobel Prize. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, evidently, that's not a gold medal in the Olympics, but the Nobel Prize is pretty good. So, uh, congratulations, Brian. Uh, <laughs> at some point, oh, here we go. We're on the test pattern. It's it's good. I've been saved by the test pattern. Ah, uh, well, I imagine that in a few years' time, uh, I might receive the next award for botching these these. Uh, Ceremony so so utterly, but uh, not this year, I, I gather. I'm going to pass now to our Chief Operating Officer, Paul, Paul Daldig, uh, who's going to present the Vice Chancellor's Award for Innovation and Excellence in Service. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Michael, and hello, everyone. I'm speaking to you here on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. I had the very great pleasure of being on the judging panel for these awards and I have to say the nominations this year were outstanding, all of them, and it's very, very hard to, uh, to choose. However, we have to, uh, given the ex uh, exceptional year that we've all experienced and the challenges we've all faced, it's not surprising that there are four recipients tonight of the Innovation and Excellence in Service Award. The first recipient is someone who navigated the challenges created by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic with flexibility and creativity. First award goes to Mrs. Vicky Stanley. Vicky successfully adapted the Innovation ACT program, traditionally an intensive hands-on in-person 10 week long student entrepreneurship program into an entirely virtual program delivered to over 100 entrepreneurs from ANU and the wider Canberra region. Vicky harnessed the opportunities to streamline the program and still keep participants' imaginations engaged and challenged. Please join me in congratulating Vicky and now invite her to say a few words. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, thank you, everyone. It's, it's such an honour to be, uh, to receive this award, particularly on a night where um, such incredible, inspiring colleagues are also being recognised. Um, I want to express my thanks to my, my colleagues who nominated me for this award. Um, it's, it's a great honour to, um, to have that, that work valued and appreciated. Uh, but this is, is an award that should be shared with um, a, a massive community of people. Um, there's a lot of different uh, people who make this program possible each year. And it's the energy of um, all of these, this 
community that helps make the program possible. So not only the program partners from the innovation ecosystem, um, all the mentors, the student committee who help run the program, the program um, alumni who give their time to help out the students each year, but also of course the, the participants themselves. Each year we have hundreds of students who take out their, um, their own time from their weekends and their evenings to challenge themselves to, um, to call themselves an entrepreneur and, and really uh, put their passion and energy into this program. And we definitely wouldn't have a program without it. So thank you very much and thank you for the award, guys. Thank you, Vicky, and congratulations. Our second recipient is a team that was established to enable rapid response support during the COVID-19 pandemic. The community wellbeing team ensured that a responsive, skilled and dedicated team of staff and students was in place to support our community during a rapidly evolving situation. Throughout this time, the community wellbeing team members continue to undertake their business as usual with absolute commitment and are to be congratulated for going above and beyond to keep our community safe and supported. I also understand that this team and certain members of it still meet today, crossing the boundaries of academic areas and uh, central administration. And it's really formed a wonderful uh, bond between those people as well. Please join me in congratulating the community wellbeing team. And I now invite Kyla Wilson to say a few words on behalf of the team. Thank you, Paul. So as you heard, uh, the community wellbeing team was a brainchild. Um, I think it was actually Paul's brainchild. It was a gift from Paul and the crisis management team who wanted to make sure that all staff, students and visitors were equally supported throughout the pandemic. We had a brief and it was to find the really well known doers across the university and bring them together to make sure all of our community feel really safe. So I think we did that. Um, we were staffed with folks from across colleges, divisions, portfolios and student bodies, which made it really, really special experience for all of us. Paul's right, some of us still connect with each other often. We're a really wonderful group of staff and I think we've worked together on a collective cause, which was something I don't know that any of us have actually experienced in the university before. So I know we had 60 seconds, so I'm going to use half of them to name the list because I think they all deserve a little bit of a shout out. So in no particular order, um, we've got Belma Burke, Ben Gill, Tilly Hickenbotham, Joe Dushi, Zin Lee, Jerry Patron, Scott Walker, Tanya Willis, Utsaf Gupta, Dee Drummond, Nora Sauter, Matthew McClay, Lachlan Day, Anna Cowan, Sally Rodriguez, Justin Donnelly, Melinda Brady, Mel Melanie Greenhouse, Alison Scott, Eugene Saw, and then there's an extra special thanks for the few that really worked together with me to make sure that we pulled this together. And it was Nadine White, Jenna Robeshaw, Danielle Claudianos, and Yana Portrabeka. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kyla, and thank you so much to the team. What a great effort. Our third recipient is another team who worked tirelessly to put in place operational and policy measures to support the ANU community during a time of heightened stress. And like the community wellbeing team, did this all while, continu all while continuing their day job. But this was for the other crises. The fire and hail response team should be congratulated for the dedication, innovation and embodiment of the ANU values. The team demonstrated innovation and excellence in service in unprecedented circumstances by providing rapid response support to the entire AMU community. I'd particularly like to thank Human Resources Director Dr Nadine White and Facilities and Services Director Nikki Middleton. You've both demonstrated incredible leadership during the toughest year the university has ever faced. Please join me in congratulating the fire and hail response team and I now ask Dr. Nadine White to say a few words on behalf of the team. Thanks, Paul. Um, it's um, my pleasure to speak on behalf of all of the teams who are involved in the rapid response for the fire and hailstorms. I have a few of them in the background in my dining room this evening. Uh, we've come together to celebrate. I'm not going to mention anyone's names individually, but this was a collaborative effort. Um, which went on to last for some weeks, including some months after those two events, where we pulled together a number of staff who helped us continue business operations, but also respond to critical events when we lost power, we lost uh, a number of, of windows in buildings, we lost vehicles, um, and this was all coming from people who had suffered losses themselves. So they had lost 
um, homes and cars and had severe damage to, to buildings outside the campus. So this was an amazing effort of a group of people that cuts across almost every area of the university. I did consider donning my high vis tonight um, in honour of the efforts that, that these teams had put together and come together to deliver. This is a continuing effort. The insurance claims will go on for, for many years, I imagine, um, and we will continue to rebuild. But this group of people are thoroughly committed to the university and making sure that the university was able to continue business operations. So everyone who was involved, you know who you are. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work that you did on those days and continue to do. Thank you so much, Nadine. And look, I'd also just like to uh, give a shout out to everybody who was involved across the, across the campus. Unfortunately, with these awards, we can't um, single out every single team, but every single team made a contribution. And I know that you know that, but I thought I'd say it anyway. And last, but certainly not least, our final recipient for the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Innovation and Excellence in Service goes to regular, all-round nice person, Matt Talbot. He didn't just win it for being a nice person though. Matt has made an exceptional contribution to the ANU community in his long career here. But in 2020, he's absolutely exceeded the high levels of service, action and leadership for which he's known. Matt led the almost impossible uh, task, which was the return to campus task force and ensured clear communications between the community, the executive and decision makers. His tireless and unrelenting commitment and dedication to ANU and his colleagues helped bring the community together in what was a very difficult uh, response to the pandemic. And it was a surprisingly complicated task. Please join me in congratulating Matt. And I now invite him to say a few words. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, this is um, amazingly great, but also unexpected news. Um, I think the theme for tonight is really around uh, and it goes without saying that being nominated for such prestigious awards is, is a great recognition and acknowledgement that we're doing a lot of things right at the university. Um, that um, broad spiel of, of what, what we've gone through this year is really around a collective effort from everybody. Um, we draw upon the good leadership, the great leadership of the university executive, um, as well as the values that a lot of people hold tightly. So for me, yeah, it was a, it was a great challenge, lots of learning, but collective effort from everybody. Um, like the previous winners, there's too many people to thank. Um, you know who you are. Um, and without you, uh, the fundamental success we have in dealing from crisis to crisis, is, we, we can't achieve that. So um, it's no surprise to anyone that I find this somewhat excruciating to accept a, a, an award on behalf of other people as well. That's great. It's not just me, but um, I found it really energizing in a really kind of weird way to do this in a crazy full throttle cast of thousand approach this year. So we're not finished that particular project yet, but um, thank you to all the staff who have been involved. Um, we never gave up and we're, we're positioned well for, for moving forward. So thank you to everybody else. Thanks, Matt. The judging panel also has uh, chosen two finalists um, for the Award for Innovation and Excellence in Service. And these are two great examples of, of quite specific responses by people to the COVID-19 pandemic. The first finalist is the ANU College of Business and Economics 2020 off-campus student experience project team. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, budgetary constraints and organisational reforms, this team's commitment to the university's vision to provide a world-class student experience never faltered. The team demonstrated creativity, dedication and passion to develop and coordinate several outstanding initiatives that have successfully transformed the remote learning experience of CBE students. These initiatives were diverse with everything from online study club, cooking demonstrations to virtual employability workshops. Thank you to the CBE 2020 off-campus student experience project team for your commitment to creating a fond, engaging and impactful academic journey for our students, no matter the circumstances. And our second finalist for the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Innovation and Excellence in Service is the Travel Restriction Relief Bursary Team. This team's collaboration, efficiency and flexibility allowed them to quickly and successfully establish a travel bursary for students impacted by the mainland China travel restrictions. This team processed over 3,000 applications in just four weeks with over 22,000 rows of claims in over 20 currencies and languages. 
This team put in three and a half months of intensive effort to help ANU students continue their studies in 2020. Thank you for your hard work. I know that many students couldn't have got through this year without you. And so thank you to both finalists. Oh, thank you, Paul. Uh, look, it's, it's evident to me that I'm gonna to have to pick up my game if I ever hope to win an award of this uh, calibre. Uh, anyway, I, I thought as we move to the next set of awards, I'd share with you the outfit I was going to wear tonight instead of my bow tie and suit. Uh, this is uh, Millie, the uh, mascot for the Sydney 2000 Olympics, and of course they sell the costume. Uh, unfortunately, Australia Post wasn't able to get it to me on time. We had a lot of deliveries apparently, uh, and so I'm just going to have to show you the picture. It does look a little bit spooky there looming behind me. Mm. Well, the evening rolls on. Let's go to the next award category. I'm going to pass now to our, our teaching spiritual leader, Grady Venville. And Grady is going to give us uh, uh, insight into the Vice Chancellor's Award for Early Career Academics. Over to you, Grady. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. Um, what a, a great evening to hear what everybody's doing and to celebrate the great achievements. Um, it's great honour to be presenting the award that acknowledges the hard work of one of our many brilliant early career academics. This year's winner is one of the very best medical researchers of their generation and a powerful ambassador for research excellence at ANU. Professor Si Ming Man leads an internationally recognised research program that aims to better understand how immune uh, receptors detect pathogens in order to better harness the power of our own immune defence in the fight against infectious disease and cancer. The discoveries made by Si Ming and his team have been highly impactful with many being amongst the top 1% um, of most cited papers in his field and published in the highest quality uh, scientific journals. These breakthroughs have, breakthroughs have also generated substantial interest beyond academia uh, with media coverage attracting over 2 million views. Uh, uh, absolute congratulations, Professor Mann. I would like, now like to invite you to briefly speak. Thank you very much, uh, Grady, and thank you. Uh, it's an incredible honor to be a recipient of the uh, VC award. Um, I sincerely thank the VC and the selection committee for this uh, support, especially for young uh, career researchers like myself and others who are starting their career here at the ANU. Um, I want to thank the Dean of the College of Health and Medicine, Professor Russell Bruin, and our Director of John Curtin School of Medical Research, Professor Graham Mann. Both of them have really provided provided excellent mentorship in helping me developing my independent research career here at the ANU. I want to thank my head of department of immunology and infectious disease, Professor David Sharkey for this nomination, for this nomination and his unwavering support as always. And of course, I want to thank my lab members. Uh, there are 14 of us, uh, highly energetic researchers who all share the same passion about using the immune system to find cures for infectious diseases and cancer. And they really help make this, the lab a fun place to come to work. And of course, I want to thank, quickly thank my colleagues at the John Curtin. Um, out of all the places that I worked in the, in the past, including the UK and the US, um, I found John, John Curtin to be one of the finest places to do biomedical research. And that's because of the generosity and spirit of the researchers here. And uh, so it's an honor to be working alongside you. And so I'd like to end by saying again, thank you to the Vice Chancellor. And I look forward to uh, contributing to this ANU community, community that I love for many years to come. Um, thank you uh, very much uh, and congratulations, Si Ming. And with many of our early career academics doing marvelous things, we also have two finalists. I would like to... Uh... Uh, congratulate our two finalists, Dr. Kathleen Gasha, who has combined stellar observational and modeling techniques and an innovative approach to create the next generation of stellar, stellar evolutionary models, the Stromlo Stellar Tracks. This is uh, groundbreaking work. Uh, congratulations, Catherine. Of course, I may be a little biased because this is the stuff that uh, uh, is really in what I do. Uh, and well done, and congratulations. Uh, in addition to that wonderful work, she's an excellent student mentor, research supervisor, as well as being an exceptionally, exceptionally strong role model, both in terms of research and encouraging her students to develop 
their professional skills. So well done. Uh, we have Grady back. Grady, are you back? Ann Evans' dog is trying to take over. Um, <laughs> all right, our second finalist is, for Early Career Academics Award is Dr. Nicholas White. Since starting his independent career at ANU, Dr. White has balanced the demands of education and research and excelled at both. Dr. White has established an international reputation for his work in the field of supramolecular chemistry and was recently awarded the 2020 Royal Australian Chemical Institute's Rennie Memorial Medal awarded to the leading early career chemist in Australia. He's also made constructive and valued service contributions within the Research School of Chemistry and the discipline of chemistry, particularly as a peer leader in enhancing the working environment and opportunities of the early career researchers. Congratulations on being a finalist, Dr. White, and thank you both for your work in research and teaching. Congratulations. Oh, do we have Grady back at all? Because if we don't, I'll, I'll take the helm and I'll take over from you, Brian, since I, I think it's nominally my job to do that. But of, of course, it's the Vice Chancellor's Award, so wouldn't the Vice Chancellor step in and I'll rescue them? I'll give a hand to you, Michael, although I'd yeah. prefer to hand, hand to Grady. If Grady's here? No. All right. Okay, well, we'll continue. Uh, so this is the, the next award is the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Research. And uh, this year's recipient has been involved with Indigenous languages and education since 1996. Uh, living and working in two remote Indigenous communities in the Northern Territory for six years before obtaining a PhD in undertaking linguistic research. Dr. Carmel O'Shaughnessy has gone well, behind, well beyond the required activities of her position as a linguist to respond to Walpuri community aspirations and make her research accessible to the community and especially to Walpuri educators. Carmel's research on a new Australian mixed language, Light Walpuri, has been reported in many national and international media outlets, which helps people to understand how languages emerge. Now, at a policy level, Carmel was a contributor to the National Indigenous Languages Report, which brings a new approach to understanding language ecologies with implications for policy. Carmel continuously strives to contribute to reconciliation through her research and applied research activities, teaching and service. And on a personal note, uh, as chair of the Ethics Committee, it's been a, an absolute delight to work with a researcher like Carmel, who places the ethical responsibilities of the research at the absolute highest level and has worked so cooperatively with us. I really appreciate that on a personal level, Carmel. So thank you for your impactful work. And I'd like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you so much, Michael, for your kind words and also to the people who nominated me. Like everyone else, I didn't know about this. Um, I'd like to very much thank all of the Walpuri people who have contributed to the research um, over many, many years. Um, of course, it couldn't have been possible without them. And to my colleagues and the supportive research environment at ANU for, for supporting research in this way over the years. And you can maybe see some of my friends and colleagues here with me at the moment. We took Brian's invitation to be festive quite seriously. <laughs> and, uh, we're in Alice Springs now um, enjoying this moment. So thank you very much. Wonderful, Carmel. And your background is, is, is beautiful as well. So thank you, Carmel. And thank you for Grady. And uh, look, we're going to send out a search party. We will find Grady, don't worry. We'll have her back as soon as we're able. Well, time for another Olympic moment. Uh, this one I've, dished, I've uh, pulled out of the archives. Uh, here we have uh, a, another picture of our vice cha uh, our chancellor, sorry, uh, Julie. Uh, and uh, here walking with Olympian Herb Elliott, I understand. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call again. <sighs> Not Herb. Howard. Howard Elliott. Hmm, okay. Never heard of him. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Maybe we'll send uh, these two out looking for Grady. We'll see how that goes. Uh, speaking of uh, impact, as we weren't, uh, the ANU is all about impact. Uh, I understand that the next awards, are the Vice Chancellor's Award for Impact and Engagement. We have Jane O'Dwyer, our, D our DVC for uh, Global Engagement, uh, to, to bring, these, bring us these next awards. Over to you, Jane. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be speaking to you here from a room many will recognise, the Ross Honan Room, uh, surrounded by the wonderful team Scapper. 
uh, and who are all celebrating everyone's wins tonight. Uh, and we are here, of course, on Ngunnawal land, and I pay my respects to Elders past and present. It's my great pleasure to be presenting the Vice-Chancellor's Award for Impact and Engagement. Our, we have, this year we have three recipients, uh, and our first recipient is a world-recognised regional public health expert who has spent the year assisting with the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Mera Shiel travelled to Papua New Guinea to work with the World Health Organisation and assist with PNG's COVID-19 response. Locally, Meru had led the coordination of a COVID operational research study in Tasmania and in Canberra helped to develop and train contact tracers for, the AC, for ACT Health. Meru also advised Indigenous training material based on her experience in Pacific Islands countries. Millions of people have seen Dr Shields' expertise in the media this year. Featured as a top COVID-19 expert, Mero has written opinion pieces that have set news agendas and gave practical and useful advice to the public. Mero, congratulations on your amazing achievements and I'd now like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Jane. And um, I really wasn't expecting this at all, but thank you to the team who nominated me um, and a few other people that I'd like to thank, specifically our school director, um, Professor Lyndall Strassium, for her support through this year, particularly as a mid-career researcher. And um, I really um, would like to thank the people who inspire me to do the work that I do, specifically people in the field and all the um, international collaborations and the partnerships uh, working in another in the regional context. Um, I really would like to thank them. It's been a challenging year in many countries, um, of course, in Australia as well. So I really want to thank them for the partnerships and all the inspirations and the opportunity to work with them. So yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Mary. Wonderful achievement. Our second recipient of the Impact and Engagement Award has more than two decades of experience in controlling high risk epidemics. Associate Professor Kamalini Loki's uh, work and that of her team has contributed significantly to Australia's world leading response to COVID, including providing the evidence needed for rapid early lockdown, providing key evidence and designing systems of surveillance and, co and control of community transmission, strengthening our contact tracing system, serving as an expert witness and su witness supporting effective public health measures, chairing the Commonwealth's Prevention of COVID-19 Resurgence Working Group and working closely with state governments, including Victoria, to control COVID on the ground through addressing control in public housing, healthcare and aged care and strengthening public health systems. Kamalini's work and that of her team has genuinely saved lives and has contributed substantially to Australia's successful response by engaging with stakeholders and providing what is needed most at a time of crisis. She's shown outstanding impact and partnership, as well as increasing the profile of ANU. This includes redefining what it means to be an academic, demonstrating what academics supported by their institutions can achieve. Congratulations to Associate Professor Kamalina Lokogi. And a, a big cheers. And unfortunately, Kamalini is not able to join us this evening, so I'd now like to invite her colleague, Professor, Lee, Professor Emily Banks, to say a few words on her behalf. Thank you very much um, to the Vice-Chancellor and to ANU for this. It's an honour to be accepting this on behalf of Kamalini. She would like to thank everyone who made this possible and is immensely grateful. Um, Kamalini's ability to contribute is the result of over 20 years working with teams controlling outbreaks. And it's the kind of thing that doesn't traditionally get academic accolades. So it's particularly important, the level to which ANU has supported her response over time. If she was here, she would express her gratitude to everyone at ANU who has put faith in her and who's let her redefine, as you said, what an academic can do and has let me as her supervisor write um, responding to at least one field emergency per year on her PDR and who's also signed off on the most extreme travel requests imaginable. <laughs> she would particularly like to thank Andrew Coburn, Brian Schmidt, Margaret Harding and more recently Russell Gruen for recognising that work like helping to control Ebola 
in poor countries is not only right, it is a smart thing to do. She would like to acknowledge that her work is that of a team and, and it's very hard to name everybody here, but she would really say that it is not just her. She would also like to thank all the wonderful public health people that she has worked with recently and over the years. She'd like to thank her family and friends and colleagues. She would say she'd like to thank me um, but for supporting her over the years, but I'm happy to accept that. But what I would say is I thank her. It's been the greatest privilege to work with her over this time. And I think finally, she would like to thank the communities all over the world that she has um, had the privilege of serving. It is communities who control pandemics. It's communities who improve health. And they are the true heroes here. So Camelini would like to thank them. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, and I think uh, much of what you just said we all would echo. Um, our third and final recipient for the 2020 Impact and Engagement Award is the ANU Medical School Infectious Diseases Experts, Associate Professor Sanjaya Senayaka and Professor Peter Colliam. This team have been trusted advisors in the media and to the general public during the COVID-19 pandemic, and I would add for many, many years on any public health issues. Their prolific appearances on our television screens, through radio networks and via online news outlets and social media feeds has meant they have been a constant and reassuring presence during the crisis. Their level-headed approach to sharing the facts, which are always based on evidence, and their friendly demeanours and genuine enthusiasm to provide information has made them the go-to resources for journalists both nationally and internationally. They have been exemplary models of the expertise that ANU employs and is able to bring to a global crisis. Congratulations to you both, and I'd like to invite you now to say a few words. Thank you, Jane. I and Peter are definitely honoured to receive such an award. Uh, it is, uh, was unexpected and most humbling, particularly when we see the calibre of those who have received other awards tonight. Look, 11 months ago, we had a complex global society like an intricately woven tapestry. Now, and along has come this microscopic virus and has started to unravel it thread by thread. But I'm glad to say that in Australia, we are starting to put that tapestry together, even if other parts of the world are not. What became very apparent within the first few weeks of COVID appearing was amongst the tsunami of cases was mirrored a tsunami of need for information from the media. And people were scared and people wanted to know what they were dealing with. And of course, even for us, information was evolving at the time. On top of that, with the advent of social media, we've also had to deal with a lot of disinformation that gets widely dispersed. So that has been a real challenge. And of course, there have been times uh, which is quite different to when we normally engage with the media about infectious diseases, when we've had very politically charged situations where we've had to comment on. But it has been a complete privilege, and I know I speak on Peter's behalf, to say that we've been able to do this to inform the Australian people and we have been able to do it with some confidence, knowing that we've got the backing of the medical school, the vice chancellor, the media unit at the ANU, and the ANU itself. So thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you Sanjaya, well deserved, and Peter. And we'll keep looking forward to hearing you bringing calming and reassuring advice to us as this uh, crisis continues to roll out. The selection committee received some incredibly strong nominations in this field and so have also awarded three finalists in the Vice Chancellor's Award for Impact and Engagement. Our first finalist is Dr Ben Bramble, the author of Pandemic Ethics, Eight Big Questions of COVID-19, the first ever monograph published on the ethics of COVID-19. As an open access book, on one of the biggest crises in humanity, the crisis humanity has faced in our lives times. It represents an enormous contribution to public philosophy. It's been discussed in the Washington Post, on Bloomberg, the Sydney Morning Herald, and other major venues, and has been a highly successful outreach program at the University of Pennsylvania. 
Bramble's book has made ANU a leading home for international work on ethics in the pandemic. Congratulations on your contribution through the book, Ben. Our second finalist is the ANU Makerspace team. In the early days of the university shutdown, availability of PPE, which I don't need to spell out for everybody because I think we all now know what PPE is, was a critical factor that blocked basic operations, both within ANU and in the wider community. The ANU Makerspace team coordinated a community-wide project that harnessed a willing volunteer pool to meet this gap until large-scale supplies could be established. The project exemplified the can-do spirit of the Makerspace. It integrated the efforts of 100 staff from across the university, as well as 90 community volunteers. It had a direct impact on all those who could operate with the help of PPE and was widely covered in the media. Congratulations to the Makerspace team. Thank you for your flexibility that has led to such great impact. And our last finalist for the Impact and Engagement Award is the Mount Stromlo Observatory Outreach Team. Mount Stromlo Observatory hosts an extensive outreach program engaging with children and adults of all backgrounds. Normal years see thousands of school children, see thousands of school children visit the campus from across Australia, as well as thousands of members of public for regular astronomy nights, where they look through the telescopes and attend astronomy talks, as well as attend other events. Despite the disruptions of 2020, the RSAA outreach team effectively engaged thousands of children and adults from all across Australia and the world in 2020 through online talks for homeschoolers and scout groups, virtual stargazing, and talks for families and adults, the outreach team reached over 78,000 people from every state and territory in Australia, as well as from as far away as the USA, India, Portugal, Belgium, Japan, and more. And I have to say, I really enjoyed one evening of the stargazing with my six-year-old goddaughter who was completely taken with your efforts. So congratulations to this adaptable team for continuing important work in a difficult year. Thank you, Jane. And boy, we've got such an inspirational set of people winning awards tonight. It really is uh, quite unbelievable. Uh, we're going to move on now to our award for health and safety. You know, this award has taken on even more significance this year when it's all about health and safety. Uh, Jane mentioned PPE. Uh, well, we've, we've also got this new concept of social distancing. Uh, this, uh, this is a, an example of social distancing here, uh, an Olympic moment that I think you'll all remember. Uh, now, I gather Usain Bolt actually uh, contracted COVID-19, but it wasn't from his other competitors. He was far too far away from them. So uh, as you can see, social distancing is an effective strategy. So I'm going to hand over now uh, uh, to Paul Dolding again. And Paul is going to take us to the Andrew Hopkins Award for Excellence in Health and Safety. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Michael. This year's recipient of the 2020 Andrew Hopkins Award for Excellence in Health and Safety is one of the teams that guided our university through the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 Expert Health Task Force mobilised expertise from across the campus to ensure that a new campus environment was as safe as possible during the COVID-19 pandemic. They met on over 20 occasions and they actually continue to meet. They undertook 21 reviews and evidence summaries, contributed to nine protocols guidelines and produced a number of fact sheets. Their expert contribution to the university's COVID response was instrumental to a new successful uh, response. And personally, it was a great reassurance to me knowing we had this extraordinary resource to draw on. These are mammoth tasks and you have and continue to work through them with efficiency and precision. I ask you to, walk, uh, to uh, join me in congratulating the team and also I now invite Professor Darren Gray to speak. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I humbly accept this award on behalf of the COVID task force. Uh, it was certainly a team effort. Um, we had over 50 people involved in the task force 
Uh, we met constantly and we worked tirelessly to help with the ANU, but people in the task force also worked with government, did research and were very, very active uh, in the COVID response, both within the university, within Canberra, and also within in the nation and, and the region. Um, I'd like to thank Brian and Russell for their vision of pulling us all together uh, in the beginning. And um, it was a pleasure to, to chair this group um, and we still meet. Um, and um, there's, a, there's so many people to mention, so I won't mention everyone, but a, a special shout out to, to Camelini who so I'd like to congratulate her again on, on her award this evening. Um, and, and again, I humbly accept this award on behalf of the team. Thank you. Thanks everybody for your patience. Uh, 2020 is a year for patience, isn't it? As we all try to adjust to the new normal. Unfortunately, after six months, the new normal isn't new yet. Hmm, what should we do? Well, we can reflect, of course, on yet another Olympic moment. Uh, here we have a very famous Olympic moment, which is, uh, as you would know, Stephen Bradbury, who, as I understand from Wikipedia, led from start to finish in his Olympic speed skating race. And, excuse me, not from start to finish? Everyone fell over? Oh, okay. So as I was saying, it's Stephen Bradbury who led from finish to finish uh, to win his Olympic gold medal. Yet another brilliant Australian Olympic moment. Right, on to the next set of awards. Now we have the Claire Burton Award for Excellence in Equity and Diversity. I'm gonna hand back to Jane O'Dwyer again to take us through this award. Over to you, Jane. Cool. So uh, the next award is named in memory and celebration of Dr. Claire Burton. Dr. Burton made a broad ranging and unique contribution to the advancement of women in Australia, including those in the tertiary sector. This year's first recipient has embodied a consummate connection between her research and the relationship between work and family and her longstanding work at the ANU in promoting inclusivity, equity and diversity. Professor Lyndall Strasden's research has shown how the unequal demands on women in time dedicated to care has generated health and gender equalities. Her work has revealed how paid work hours and conditions have impacts on the health of both adults and children over generations. She has demonstrated how the introduction of paid universal parental leave policy enhanced both health and equity and has argued for the importance of father's care. She has energetically promoted inclusivity, equity and diversity across the axes of gender, sexuality, race, ethnicity and ability. Most recently, as the Director of the Research School of Population Health, she has shown herself to be both an inspirational and compassionate leader, promoting inclusivity for both academic and professional staff and students through translating an ethos of equity into everyday practice. She's been influential in sensitising ANU to the unequal impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on patterns of working care, especially during periods of homeschooling and campus lockdown. As she said, she sought to make her work not just useful, but transformational, and transformational it's been. Congratulations, Lyndall Strasdens, and I'd like to now invite you to say a few words. Uh, wow. Um, look, um, I, I just want to say how humbled and surprised I am to uh, receive this award, and I'm incredibly uh, grateful and honoured. And actually, I've been sitting here just kind of glowing because... Um, basically, I'm going to hear about um, the incredible acknowledgement of the work of so many people, particularly people from the Research School of Population Health, the outstanding um, contributions, and I've seen them make those contributions, and uh, I'm just so incredibly proud. So um, I just want to share with you something that really changed how I thought and what I've done. And that's the words of an anti-slavery abolitionist, Frederick Douglass. And he said, no one's equal until everyone's equal. And that's a really profound statement when you stop and think about it. And I want to thank as well as, uh, I want to, first of all, I want to celebrate um, the Gender Institute and Margaret and Fiona for all that they've done. 
for, uh, for women and actually for men uh, in this university, for everyone. Um, and I particularly want to thank some of the great, strong uh, women who have really helped me uh, step into what Frederick Douglass meant when he said that. I'd like to thank Dorothy Broom, uh, Gabrielle Bama, Jill Guthrie, and Terry Dunbar. There are many others, but these four women have really helped me step into what those words mean. And I'm incredibly grateful uh, to their help uh, in guiding me. I don't really want to speak much longer except to say um, I'm um, really delighted to be part of this university, which is doing, you know, taking equality in all its forms so seriously. Congratulations to the ANU. I really uh, honour and admire the efforts that are happening on so many fronts. And these awards uh, are speaking to that as well. Thank, thank you, Lyndall, and thank you for that really inspirational uh, acknowledgement there. And our second recipient of the Claire Burton Award for 2020 is the Two Way Project team. The Two Way Project is a groundbreaking initiative designed to build bridges between ANU and Indigenous women in the ACT and surrounds. It reduces barriers to inclusion and promotes equal opportunity for Indigenous women by transforming the way the university operates reaching out to otherwise hard to reach disadvantaged women through arts and cultural programs on and off campus. By developing this novel and grounded approach to equ equity and diversity, the team has engaged and celebrated the women's diverse skills in two-way learning that recognises their vast cultural community knowledge on par with academic expertise. The two-way project promotes an inclusive environment that values and utilises the contributions of people from different backgrounds, experiences and perspectives. Congratulations to the two-way team and I'd like to invite team lead Dr Kira Lee Jordan to speak. Thank you so much and what an incredible honour to be noted here alongside Lyndall and her incredible work for such a long time at ANU. Um, and thank you for this recognition for the project, the two-way project to, to the Vice Chancellor, the Selection Committee, and to Professor Denise Ferris, Head of the School of Art and Design, who nominated us. Thank you so much. It's wonderful that others see the project as important as we do. And what we've sought to do with the two-way project is really reach out from ANU to the local Aboriginal community and to meet people who might otherwise be hard to reach where they're at. And that's meant from the outset working with a cross section of the community to find out the kinds of programs that people want and then making those programs possible, both here at ANU and in outreach through our partners at Wananga and Nimitijar Aboriginal Health Service and also at the Alexander McConaughey Centre. And we couldn't have done any of that without seed funding from the CAS Small Grant in 2018, which led to a larger grant from the Commonwealth Office of the Arts to make this possible. A fundamental principle of our project has been to work as a collective and it's not just about individuals with expertise but about all of us coming together and learning from each other. So that means we have a really big team here at ANU and that hinges on a very successful collaboration between myself and colleagues at the Centre for Aboriginal Economic Policy Research and Associate Professor Alison Alder and her colleagues at the School of Art and Design. Two centres here at the ANU that recognise the central importance of art and culture in progressive social change. I want to acknowledge the really critical contributions of our ANU team, including Alison, as well as Anique Thomason at CAPA, Adele Cameron, Sana Carroll and Lucy Irvine at the School of Art and Design, Denise Angelo at SLLL, Deidre Howard Wagner at CAPA, and Sean Pereira at Graduate Studies Select. And I also want to acknowledge the indispensable contributions of our community partners around Canberra, including fabulous textile artist Ronnie Jordan, who is a Kalkadoon and Pitta Pitta woman who's been delivering our outreach program to Aboriginal women in AMC, as well as Gurringai artist Amanda Jane Reynolds and Wiradjuri storyteller Larry Brandy, who've both brought so much to our, our, our outreach programs at Wananga. Um, and also to Samantha Keaton, who's the linchpin of making our programs with Wananga work. Lastly, I also want to acknowledge all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women who've worked with us 
in our workshops and who've brought such joy um, to the workshops and made them so much fun for us all. And this program, this program really is for them, but it's also with them. And I wanted to show some of the work they've been doing. Behind me here is an artwork from one of our participants, Cassie Nicolaitis, a Darug woman. And this is a beautiful print that she did with us in a screen printing project at the School of Art. And uh, along with Cassie's work, all of the work that women are making will be shown at the School of Art and Design in August next year. So all of us in the project team would love you all to come along. Thank you. Thank you, Kira Lee and the team for such an inspirational project. And everyone needs to mark August in their diary for next year. With some fantastic nominations for this award, we've also got a finalist to announce. The Department of Pacific Affairs has worked over the past 15 years to build a, build a research agenda, teaching program and PhD program that is based on the principles of inclusion and diversity. Associate Professor Nicole Haley's leadership since 2008 has set the vision, secured the funding and created the environment and workplace culture in which this approach thrives. Inclusive and positive workplace cultures are key to maintain environments where people want to work, thus supporting staff, job satisfaction, productivity, retention and diversity. And Associate Professor Haley's work has been instrumental to making this a reality. Congratulations, Nicole, and thank you to your dedication to including uh, inclusion and diversity. Thanks so much, Jane. Uh, and look, uh, I've been at ANU for 26 years and uh, I must say the place is so diverse and so inclusive these days uh, compared to 26 years ago. So, you know, it is a real testament. Uh, so a bit like the Academy Awards, uh, the, the, the biggest award is, is the last award. So we're headed for the last big award of the evening. Uh, and I'm, I'm, as someone who loves teaching, I assume this, because it's last, it must be the most important. And this is the Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence. Uh, one more picture to share with you, which is um, another Olympic moment, I think. Uh, this is uh, Brian uh, winning, was it the gold medal for the pole vault at the 2012 London Olympics, Brian, I think? Uh, maybe not. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm gonna pass over to Brian who can clarify that because uh, I'll have to get on that Wikipedia page and edit it up later. And Brian's going to announce the Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence. Thank you, Martin. And yes, that's Eddie Redmayne back there. And Eddie Redmayne had to sit with Jenny and me because he was the B lister at the Breakthrough Prize in 2014, about six weeks before he became famous for all the things <laughs> that year. So it's all right sometimes at your table. We've reached tonight's final award, the Vice Chancellor's Award for Educational Excellence. And since the university leads with its educational excellence alongside its excellence in research, uh, this is a fitting award to finish up on. This year's recipient is a clinician who is passionately committed to evidence-based, student-focused teaching design and inclusive teaching principles. In the last five years, Associate Professor Dipti Talawakar has led an award-winning redesign of one of the seven building blocks of student education within the ANU School of Medicine. Dipti has also transformed a struggling bedside teaching program at Canberra Hospital into one that now receives top rankings from the students and her teaching sessions are being applied across her school. As a mentor, Dipti aims to develop well-rounded future doctors and she mentors students and peers with a focus on equity and access for all. What fantastic work and congratulations, Dipti. I'd now like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I am honored and humbled um, to receive such a prestigious award and so grateful to those who have uh, nominated and supported me, uh, Professor Christine Phillips, uh, Professor Jujuka Keshkesh, my mentor, Professor Julia Potter, uh, all incredible women who lift you up. Um, my mentor, Professor Paul Gatenby, um, I'm very grateful to you for setting me on this path. I love teaching and it is such a, a core uh, component of my values and my job satisfaction now. 
Um, it is a real privilege to be an educator at the ANU. Um, this is an organization that really celebrates its teachers and supervisors um, and promotes uh, inclusivity and innovation. I am especially thankful um, for accepting to the university for accepting me, a migrant woman, uh, into this community with such warmth and graciousness. I am very grateful. Um, I uh, have various roles as a clinician, as an educator, and as a researcher, uh, and I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity to shape, in even a small way, uh, the careers and the minds of our future medical force. My experiences across two continents have um, convinced me that our students are equal partners in this journey. All the innovations and changes that I have been able to bring about have been based on their feedback. Um, I thank them from the bottom of my heart. We really get along well and we enjoy the experiences in teaching and learning that we share. Um, we are facing an uh, uncertain future. Um, I face it bravely, <laughs> knowing we have uh, excellent um, teaching teams, uh, we have the innovative ideas, and we have the engaged student body. Uh, and we can really uh, enhance ANU's reputation uh, as a world leader in education. Thank you very much for the award. Thank you so much, Dipti, and it's us who are grateful to you. Uh, and uh, you reflected on us accepting you, but uh, you're one of us. And so we, we very much value all of, all of what you bring to the university. And yes, I, I agree. This is the first time in uh, 26 years I've had to teach online and uh, my goodness, hasn't the world changed? Well, we've reached almost the end of the evening, but the evening would not be over until we recognize those who've been with us the very longest. Uh, here we have a picture of Fajua Singh, the world's oldest marathon runner at age 100, uh, completing a marathon. Uh, last year uh, was my 25th year at the ANU and I received my 25 year award from the then chancellor Gareth Evans. And I'm now jealous of those going this year. I should have waited a year so that I could receive the award from Julie. Uh, so I'm going to pass now to our Chancellor, Julie, who's giving this award, even though it's the Vice Chancellor's Award, uh, for a special reason. So let me pass to you, Julie, for our long service leaders. Thank you, Professor Martin. And uh, it's been a great effort on your part this evening, although I would encourage you not to give up your day job just yet. Now, this year we have a large number of staff members who have delivered 25 years of service to the university, which in itself speaks volumes uh, about our university. This is also a significant personal milestone and one of which so many of you should all be very proud. Your loyalty and dedication to ANU is admirable and has in no small way contributed to what has been achieved over that period. Now, the complete list has been posted in the chat and I do encourage you to read that list and to congratulate all your colleagues on this special milestone event. And while, yes, we usually get the Vice-Chancellor to sign the Vice-Chancellor Long Service Awards, I have signed one this year as we couldn't let the Vice-Chancellor sign his own certificate. Now, Brian, I know you wouldn't ask to be singled out, but I do want to acknowledge and congratulate you on your extraordinary years of service to ANU. <laughs> and what a year to mark your 25-year milestone. Despite the challenges of 2020, uh, devastating bushfires and uh, hailstorms and a pandemic, you continue to lead ANU, our whole community, with integrity and authenticity and care and optimism, such admirable qualities. And I was delighted that you agreed earlier this year to continue as Vice-Chancellor for another five-year term. So thank you, Brian, for all that you do for ANU. Now, as the evening comes to a close, I invite you all to join me in celebrating the achievements of the 2020 recipients. Now, if you have a drink in hand, please raise your glass as we toast 
our 2020 recipients. Congratulations to you all on your fantastic achievements. You all make ANU proud. Cheers. I'll now hand back to our resident MC, Professor Martin. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm a, like Brian, I'm an optimist as well. So I'm going to interpret your comments as meaning I have a day job tomorrow, which is uh, very good news indeed, I must say, because I wasn't entirely sure I would. So, well, we've reached the end of our evening. Uh, look, I want to say thank you to everybody uh, who's here tonight uh, for being part of us and for being part of a campus that has really come together at a time when the world has tried to tear us apart. Uh, COVID-19, of course, has raised enormous challenges for us. My God, the Olympics didn't happen this year except in our little evening event. It's a crazy time. Wars don't stop Olympics, right? And yet we've managed to survive this year. You all deserve a massive congratulations just for that. But not only have you survived this year, but you've brought with it some integrity and some real passion and determination for what it is we do. We teach, we research. Our students rely on us and we have come through despite all the travails of this year. Now, in a nod to the Olympics references I've been making all night, and by now you're all heartily sick of them, I will remind you that at the closing ceremony every Olympics, it is now that I would declare this the best awards ceremony ever. So I'm gonna give myself a drink for that. <laughs> well done, everybody. And I call upon the colleges of the world to unite again in one year's time until next year, when we unite in, let me announce, Acton to have another awards event where maybe it won't be me. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And thank you for coming to this lovely event. And thank you to all of our, our guests. Thanks, Michael. Well done.